Where does human come from? Who created the first person? There is a Chinese idiom that answers these questions. Hi, welcome to another episode of Untold Tales Behind Chinese Idioms. I am Huang, and the Chinese idiom we're going to talk about today is 女娲造人. 女娲 is the name of a goddess. In some regions in China, 女娲 is respected as the creator. 造 means create. 人, human, people like us. So what's the story of 女娲造人? 女娲 was first mentioned in a book called The Classics of Mountains and Rivers. We don't really know the exact author of this book or the exact time when it was finished. We only know that the book was created before China was united as one country. It was created somewhere between the Warring States period and early Han Dynasty. So that's 476 to 202 BC. So what's the story of Nü Wa Zao Ren? The most common version of this story says, After the world was created, since no one knows when, there was a goddess who was a shapeshifter. She could shapeshift 70 times a day. One day, she walked around the world and found herself very lonely. She felt like something was missing in this world. She kept walking and walking until she felt tired. And she sat by a river and looked at the reflection of herself in the water. When she smiled, the reflection of herself smiled in the water. And when she wrinkled her nose, the reflection of herself in the water did the same. And she suddenly had an idea. Why don't I create something just like me? So she dug up some mud and started to create a little sculpture like herself. When she put the little sculpture on the ground, the little sculpture started moving and calling her mom. The little person cheered for being alive. Seeing how beautiful the little creature she created, Yuwa felt really happy and gave this little creature a name, human. Even though the human was little compared to Yuwa, it looked like her and spirited like her. Yuwa was satisfied with her work, so she kept creating more human beings, and those little person just jumped and cheered around her, made her even happier. And she kept working and working when the sun goes down and the star goes up, day after day, night after night. And then she finally felt tired, but she looked at the world around her. The world was boundless, but there were only so few of the human beings she created. As she looked around, she had an idea. She snapped a dry vine from the mountain and dipped it in the muddy water. As she whipped it, the mud on the vine spread out and becomes more human beings, just like the one she created before. And this way she can create humans much faster. I wonder if that was the reason why Chinese people have yellow skin. Because one of the most famous river in China is called Huanghe, Yellow River. And lowest plateau is famous for its yellow earth, mud, soil. If Nüwa sit by Huanghe Yellow River and use yellow mud to create human being, that could be why we have yellow skins. Soon after, Earth was filled with human beings, but Nüwa's work was not done. She realized that the human being she created didn't have eternal life like her. They die after a certain time. How to keep human civilization survive without her doing all the work? And she came up with an idea. She let people work together and create the next generation. Generation after generation. And that's how human beings survive to today. And that's the story of Nü Wa Zao Ren. There are more Chinese idioms about Nü Wa and about the great things she did for human. Actually, in some part of China, Nüwa is considered the creator. It's said that on lunar calendar January 1st, Nüwa created chicken. January 2nd, Nüwa created dog. January 3rd, Nüwa created pig. January 4th, Nüwa created sheep. January 5th, Nüwa created cow. January 6th, Nüwa created horse. On the 7th of January, that's when Nüwa created human being. Some also said that Nuwa's body becomes the ground, her hair becomes the forest, her bones becomes the mountains, and her blood becomes rivers. If you have watched my previous episode about Pangu Kai Tian, you might notice that there are some overlaps between their creation story. Mind you, 
Pangu story comes hundreds of years later than Nuwa's. As human civilization developed, we had a matriarchal society and patriarchal society. When patriarchal society takes over, Nuwa's status lowers and her status moves up when women are more respected in the society. There are quite a few research papers on how Nuwa's role changes during history. It is quite interesting to see how mythology changes and how it reflects gender roles in history. So do you like today's story? I'm going to talk more about Nuwa when I share more idioms on Chinese mythology. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.